Hey everyone, so join me on this journey to transform plain English to SQL queries. That's right, so we'll be building a text-to-SQL conversion system. So grab your snacks and discharge. So first thing first, what is text-to-SQL? Imagine you want to retrieve information from a database, but you don't know SQL. So here comes a text-to-SQL. So text-to-SQL is just like hearing a translator that converts your natural language questions into SQL queries. Easy peasy, right? So why is it important? Like, well, not everyone is a database guru. So by enabling users to communicate in plain language, we can make database more accessible and empower decision making across various fields easier. So why I'm doing this project because I was told to do so simply. But when I came across choosing my model, so let's start like first I'll be tell I will tell you about large language model structure. Now the one. So, transformer structure consists of some major dumps. So, I'll be telling you about Nano GPT. So, the Nano GPT consists of around 85,584 parameters. So, what are parameters? So, parameters refers to internal variables that the model learns. All right. So, these parameters influence how the model processes the input data and processes output data. So, in this Nano GPT model, there are can be weight biases in the layer specific parameters like attention heads and feed over neural network. So I told you about the introduction and that here comes the embedding. So what is embedding? So the embedding layer converts word into dense vector representation. So these vector capture semantic information about the words, allowing the model to recognize similar words based on their meaning rather than just their spelling. So let's see about embedding here. So here what's written, embedding is a vector representation of data where linear distance captures structures in the original data set. So what is data? So that this data could be consist of words in which case we call word embedding. So I'm talking about vector embedding here. So consider you have, let's talk about an example for instance. Now we have the four words, queen, king, princess, and prince, and we will be representing them in a hot vector encoding. So for example, the queen is represented as 1001, sorry, 1000. So here's the column uh, right in front of the queen is written there as one. So it shows that it's a queen. So when I come to the king one, the value in front of the king in the second column shows that one indicates that king is the value here. So it goes for three, all three, but there can be one more factor here, right? Uh, like uh, the princess and the queen, they can differ by age. Like if a girl is younger, then she can be a princess. But if she is older, then she can be a queen. So yes, we will add one more column here, like column of young. So, yes, if they are young, so they can be princess or prince. And if they are not, they can be king or queen. So, that's right. That's what we talk about in meaning here. Now, we'll be talking about layer normalization. So, layer normalization helps stabilize the training of a deep neural network by normalizing the input of each layer. It ensures that the input have a mean of zero and standard deviation of one, which prevents issues like exploding and vanishing gradient, making learning more efficient and faster. So then comes a self-attention mechanism. So self-attention mechanism uh, is a core mechanism that allows someone to focus on different part of a sequence when processing each word. For example, let me show you one thing. So what I'm telling is about self-attention. So for example, let's suppose as in a sentence, the animal didn't cross the street because it was too tired. So what I am talking about here in this sentence is the animal. So because it was too tired, so here it should refer to the animal. So the attention mechanism, self-attention mechanism, keeps in mind that whom I'm talking to about in future. Like for example, it refers to the animal in this sentence. After calculating the self-attention, our projection did transform the attention output back into a format that can be processed by the next layer of the network. So here comes a multi-layer perceptron. These all are terms that I've used in the large language model. 
But this video is not basically about large language model. It's about my project, how I fine tune my uh, T5 model to make this project text to SQL man. So I'm just giving you an overview about how LM works. You may refer to Andrew NG, no. You may uh, refer to Andrish Karpathy videos on the YouTube. So the softmiss function is used to convert the attention scores into probabilities and uh, then comes the output. So you can refer this website, perfect visualization of how LLM work is given here. So what model I've used in this project is T5. So T5 is a small model with less parameters as that in the nano GPT. So it's basically used for conversational, like uh, convert this sentence from French to English. So let's set the stage unlike older models like RNN, recurrent neural network, which naturally process words into sequence. Transformers model don't have any built in sense of order. So in a transformer, all words in a sentence are processed simultaneously in parallel which makes them super fast, but they need a way to know the order of the words. That's where positional encoding comes in. So the model needs to understand why each word is in the sequence to best relationship in grammar, meaning and context. So to give the model this information, researchers designed a system that encodes the evolution of each word in a sequence as a unique vector of numbers, hence positional encoding. So to represent the position encoding, we use two representation for even in all values on position. So for like two i, it's written here, it's for even and for uh, odd, it's two i plus one. So we are using sine and cosine functions. So why are we using them? So these functions have a properties that make them perfect for encoding position in sequence like smooth continuous functions, sine and cosine functions are continuous and smooth, meaning that small changes in the input lead to small predictable changes in the output. So this makes it perfect for encoding positional because the model can easily learn the relationship between the nearby words where the words position are only slightly different. So they basically use this uh, in the radio signal also. So they had this already made and they used it here. So let's begin with the fine-tuned model. I did that with the help of three data set from Hugging Face. So the links of the database is the uh, is given in these. I've given a IPYNB file. You can go through it. It's uh, there in my GitHub link. I'll provide you in the description. And basically what I did is I loaded the data set that contains the portion uh, text, uh, portion text and the answer. For example, give me the uh, select, give me the value of uh, give me the names of all the users. So it's like st select star uh, where name. Uh, I'm like a little bit confused in the query, but you know that. So you can see in this database that I have the SQL queries and the natural language queries both in the same one. So then I tokenize the data set with the use of a tokenizer from Hacking Face Transformer Library. So the tokenizer converts the natural language text into numeric, numerical representation that the model can understand. So then I went into the training in the validation split and I split the data set and then I went for the model setup. So I loaded the pre-tune model that is sequence to sequence model T5 using hugging face auto model for sequence to sequence LM library. This model was already fine-tuned for text-to-SQL conversion for you, but I'm fine-tuning it for later process. So, first I'm checking how this model uh, is currently working. Uh, so, there was a problem like I wanted to name uh, the name of all the users in the database, but without fine-tuning, my model was not able to recognize what all I'm talking about here. So, I am generating the query for like star where the user is equal to all. I wanted the name of all the user, but my model before fine tuning is generating like select star where user is equal to all. So there, I'm not, uh, there's uh, no one going to be named all. 
uh, I instead I wanted the name of all the users, but it's simply asking for the user whose name is all. So I pre-rendered with the uh, with the help of these three data sets. So after fine tuning it for like two epochs, where my learning rate is five e minus three, I'm actually doing it for one epoch since it's taking so much time. I did it for time saving purpose so you can do it for two or more for more precise calculation then I'm testing my fine tuning model. I've actually saved this. Uh, I was actually trying to save this model in hugging phase but due to the less access to GPU I was not able to do so. But you can do that so uh, you can directly use it in your web development project and all right. So let's talk about the LM evaluation using Roche. So in order to understand the similarity between the predicted and actual sentence, we will use the Roche calculation method like Roche 1, Roche 2 and Roche L. So the Roche 1, what we are doing, going to do is we are going to measure the uh, precision of Unigram overlap between the generated text and the re reference text. So for example, let's suppose an example, the weather is cold outside. So it's reference and output by the LLM is the weather is cold. So here, if we see the formula of recall, it's unigram matches by unigram in the reference. So unigram matches is so the, the weather, weather is cold. So it's four. So the match is four by the total number of reference, that is five. The weather is cold outside. So all right. So it's two to five. So when we come to the precision, it's basically unigram matches by unigram in the output. So how many unigrams that matches is the weather is cold. So it's four by four. So it's one. So the calculation for Roche one is like two into precision into recall by precision plus recall. All right. So the Roche one is, it's not like we cannot make it for final evaluation because it's matching the words but it's not taking the consideration uh, of like a position in consideration so we are using Roche to, to overcome this problem so now we can measure the precision of bigram overlap between the generated text and the reference text so the formula for Roche 2 is same as for the Roche 1 but this time we are taking a pair of words that's all bigrams for example, the weather weather is cold outside. So we are taking it in a pair of two and we will generate the same for the output by LLM. So, and now we are going to calculate the same thing like how many of them matches. The weather matches, weather is, weather is matches and is cold matches. So it's basically three by four and it's three by three. So we are calculating rows too. So what about, so what happens like it's not even more precise. It's not precise. So we will use Rogel that we do. It uh, it will match the longest common subsequence from the reference one in the human generated text to calculate the precision. So Rogel will basically do, for example, the weather is cold outside. So the weather is cold, weather is cold and is cold. So it's the reference generated by the human text and uh, the output. The weather is cold. So we will match the longest common subsequence and then we will calculate the recall and precision. Same goes for the like you know precision and recall. We will calculate the F1, Fn square, Fn square. Then uh, this is called the Roche evaluation metric. Alright, so that's uh, we are going to cal uh, we are going to calculate it and basically I got here from the this is the score I got from Roche 1. It's uh, like 92 percentage and Roche 288 and Roche 91. So, all right, that's all. So, that's about my performance model. And so, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll add the, all the links of the reference I've taken from in the description. So, do check out uh, if you have any suggestion for this project and any modifications. Where, um, Wait a minute, I have something to move uh, on to. I also created a backend for it. I've used Flask and uh, what it's doing, it's like, let me show you in this video. I've connected it to my SQL database and I'm generating the query 
and then it's giving me the answer i didn't get the time to make the front end but i guess that's all you can make it by yourself so i've passed a query wait uh so i've passed a query like show email of user john and it's giving me pa uh giving me back with the email so all right that's all about my project thank you for watching goodbye